Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. My name is Dee, and I am very excited today to be returning to Titans of Space on the Oculus Rift Development Kit 2. The original Titans of Space on the Oculus Rift Development Kit 1, which I already visited here in one of my very first videos, was uh, one of the most famous and successful demos um, for, that, for that platform. It came out very early in its lifetime. And what it is basically, it's just sort of an environment slash education demo. Uh, you're seated in this little spaceship and it takes you on a trip. It's all on rails and you go from one planet to another in the solar system. You learn facts about them all. And then it shows you a bunch of other suns elsewhere in the galaxy. And uh, it's despite the fact that that, that might sound totally boring if you're not like into learning about astronomy, it's actually a really moving experience and it's really effective in how it can give you this really visceral impression for how big things are. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you more about it in the demo, but a little bit about the developer. The developer goes by the handle Drash. And I don't know much about Drash. I know according to their Twitter, they're based in California. And I know they've created at least two other demos, which are not as well known as Titans of Space. One of them is um, Bestiary 11. Uh, Bestiary 11 is just, um, it's, it's a presentation of some monsters from Final Fantasy 11 inside the Oculus Rift. I believe it only has DK1 support. Actually, it does have DK2 support. How about that? Okay. Um, and the other one is TNG Engineering, which is a reproduction of the engineering bay from Star Trek The Next Generation. And that was only released on DK1 so far. DK2 version is coming sooner or later. Uh, Titans of Space is also going to be coming to Gear VR, which is the mobile VR Samsung solution that works with the Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 4 and has uh, the cooperation of Oculus in developing their software stack. So... Without further ado, I'm going to jump right into Titans of Space. Uh, this is going to be a somewhat long video. I really like to explore this particular demo in detail, and it's a lengthy demo. So I'm probably going to split this video up into a few parts. Um, the first part, I'm going to just uh, show, show the menus and some of the options and a little bit of the beginning. And after that, I'm probably going to jump into a full tour of all the planets and the moons and the asteroids and the solar system that we visit. And then I'm going to do the final part. So, without further ado, let's jump into Titans of Space. All right, here we are in Titans of Space. This is the opening uh, reset screen. So um, I want to note a couple of things here. First of all, there is a ground now at the reset screen. That didn't exist before. And second, you'll notice that whenever I move my head quickly, this fades out briefly and then reappears. And I believe they do that to uh, make the experience more comfortable. Uh, Drash cares a lot about making the experience as comfortable as possible and has done a lot of work and experimentation to try and do that. This is just one small example of that. If you have a screen like this stuck to your face that never, um, that never goes away, then when you move your head quickly, it can be quite disorienting. And so he's done this fade out effect to try and deal with that. I don't know how effective it is. I'm not really susceptible to VR sickness, um, but it's, it's an interesting technique. I'm going to go ahead and be using my Xbox 360 controller. I'm going to hit my A button to jump on into the application. Here I am. Titans of Space is also unique in that it is one of the few Oculus Rift demos that exist that has support for every goddamn language I've ever heard of. It's got like, it's got Dutch and Czech and Danish and Swedish and Chinese and Italian and Russian and Spanish and French and German and uh, so many languages. And I just, I don't know who uh, who is Drash? Is Drash translating these themselves? The, the, do they speak this many languages? Or are they getting volunteers to do it? Where are the volunteers coming from? I don't have any idea, but it's ridiculous how many languages there are. Can I change this? Let's go ahead and try and change it. Oh, I changed it. Lorsque vous êtes prête, choisissez votre monde. Uh, French is the only language here that I uh, kind of speak. Configurez correctement votre dispositif avant l'utilisation. All right, I'm going back to English. Okay, um, so that's the languages. Titans of Space, I'm just going to read this. I want to go through everything in detail here. Titans of Space is a short guided tour of a few planets and stars, the point of which is to give you a sense of scale of just how big these planets and stars are compared to each other. It's not meant to be realistic, but more on the surreal holographic size. 
Everything you see is shrunk down to one millionth of their actual size, which means you will see Earth as a 12.7 meter wide holographic ball rather than the giant 12,756 kilometer wide ball of rock that it is. So everything is shrunk down a million times. You will see that in a minute. And um, over here are some health and safety warnings. I'm not going to go through all of these, although some of them are interesting. Um, they, they mostly replicate things that you can already see in the Oculus health and safety warnings. They just kind of advise you to take breaks, to not leave your children unattended, to uh, stay in your seat and not like surround yourself with sharp knives, things like that. Anyway, there's two modes. Um, automatic is the mode where you don't need any controller or keyboard to play. You just advance using your head, or, uh, or it advances automatically, I can't remember which. And this requires only head tracking. I actually prefer the wait for input mode where you have to use your controller to advance the tour. So I'm going to be selecting this one. I'm going to point at this button and hit my A button. And here we are in the main menu, sound by johnhillman.com. So uh, the music is a big part of this experience, so I'm very thankful to all these various people from freesound.org, Quiet Andy, Royal Artifact, who have contributed their awesome music and sounds to this experience. It reminds us to take breaks. It tells us how to proceed from one thing to the next. Um, we're going to use the X button on our controller to proceed from one part of the tour to the next. It recommends having the sound on. I really, really recommend sound with this demo. Like, you, you might think that it doesn't add that much if it's just an educational demo, but the sound is so important for the atmosphere in this demo. Um, Q to quit at any time. Escape to bring up more options. All objects shown at one millionth of... Um, the right bumper is for zooming. That's going to be pretty useful for taking a look at the details of the planets. It's kind of like binoculars. And... I believe we're ready to go. Let's jump in there. Here we are. Earth. This is where we start out. And like they said, it really does look like it's no more than maybe 10 meters wide. And the moon here looks absolutely tiny. It looks the size of a... Not like super tiny, but like I feel like this moon could fit like on my bed. And it would cover like most of my bed and it would kind of stick off the sides but it would it would fit on my bed anyway now i want a moon okay welcome sit back and relax when ready appears below you may proceed there's the sun as you can see the sun is uh the sun is bigger than the earth the sun is a lot a lot bigger than the earth this is all to scale all one millionth of their actual size um, the distances are not the scale, however. The Earth is not that close to the Sun, and the Moon is definitely not that close to the Earth. Alright, let's go ahead and hit ready here. I'm just going to aim at ready and hit my A button. This is a miniature of Earth. It should appear to be 12.7 meters wide. Its actual diameter is shown above. The text is much easier to read in the DK2 version than it was in the DK1 version. I like that a lot, especially the text on the panel here. And you can lean in for a closer look at it if you want. The positional tracking works great. And the low persistence features also work great. There's no motion blur when moving my head, which is a huge improvement from DK1. So I'm really happy with it. The latency is pretty good, pretty good. There's a little bit of latency when I nod my head vigorously, but it's quite low, quite low. All right, and you can see my frames per second in the corner there is locked at 75. If I turn off VSync, I'm actually running like 250 frames a second. This is a really high performance demo. It's no surprise that uh, Drash was able to bring it to the uh, mobile platform, albeit with changes. Anyway, um, so I'm going to show you how this interface works. There's four buttons. The I button shows you more information about the thing you're looking at right now. Earth, additional facts. One AU, astronomical unit, is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, 150 million kilometers has the only known biosphere, and it has 8.7 million species, one of which are humans. Humans all the way! There are over 7 billion living humans, 20 times the human population of 650 years ago. We are spreading like rats. All right. Ooh, facts about the moon. Hey moon, we're gonna learn about you. Orbits 384,000 kilometers away from Earth. As you can see, that is not to scale. Has occasional moonquakes due to tidal forces from Earth. 
Apparently, the moon just makes us our oceans go up and down, but on the moon, you actually have earthquakes due to the forces of the Earth. Humans from Earth first set foot on the moon in 1969. That was uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, them people, the third one that I can't ever remember. And currently orbited by three NASA spacecraft, and China has an active robotic rover on the surface named U2. Not YouTube, U2. So that's pretty cool. I am learning things about you, Moon. Oh, that's cool how the letters fade in as it approaches. I like that. Okay, I'm going to use my binoculars now. Holding down my right shoulder. Get a better look at the moon here. Very nice. Um, these planetoids all seem to have um, round silhouettes. So I think they're just using textures and bump maps. They're not using displacement mapping or any other technique that affects the silhouette of the planet. Which is fine because most planets actually have round silhouettes. Any features on the surface are too small to make a big difference in their silhouette. So yeah, here's the Earth. Um, another cool button you can press if you dig into uh, the instructions. I'm going to dig into the instructions for a second here. I'm going to hit this question mark. So you can hit the A button to click on any of the buttons. You can zoom with your right bumper. I showed you that. X continues the tour. I don't want to do that yet. More info with the B button. So I can go through these by just using the B button without having to press the I icon every time. That'll be handy. And I can adjust the speed with up and down on my D-pad. I'm not going to mess with the speed. And I can rotate the planet with left and right of my D-pad. And I can orbit the planet using my left bumper. So let's check that out. So if I hit right, I can spin the planet, make it go faster. It's cool how when the lights, so on the dark side, you can see the lights of the cities. And then they turn off as it transitions into the day side. There's Hawaii. And if I hit left, I can make it spin backwards. I'm turning back time. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's not the way time's supposed to go. All right. Let's, let's let it turn in its usual direction again. Okay. Um, and finally, left bumper will actually, if I just press it, will actually spin me around the planet. So I'm going all around it now. Hey, moon. We're both moons now. You're a moon, I'm a moon, there's the sun, the sun's not a moon. There's Australia. I really like how they composited a lot of information to make this into this cool holographic experience. There goes Africa and the Middle East. Hey moon, fancy seeing you here. There's the United States. I believe I am right there in California. You can just about see where I am. There goes Hawaii again. Down there is New Zealand way at the bottom. Australia, Southeast Asia, India, all that good stuff. All right, I hit the bumper again to go back to normal view. And I'm going to go ahead and continue the tour here for a bit, but then I want to go over more of the settings. There's lots of cool things to explore here. By the way, if you just look forward and you hit A, It'll pop up these little um, button reminders on each of the buttons. So it reminds you, you can use the B button to do this, the Y button to bring up the settings, the X button to advance, and the, and the Y button also to bring up the help. And, um, and so I'm, yeah, I'm just going to advance. It's time. Wrong button. Okay. There we go. So I'm playing with a couple settings changed. I have disabled... Um, chromatic aberration correction so that you don't see chromatic aberration when you're watching on your monitor. Um, but normally I would have that turned on. And I also disabled um, the, black, um, the black smearing correction. So if I turn my head like this, I'll see a little bit of black smearing where the shadows go into the light on these planets. And that's just to make it look better on your monitor once again. So here's Mercury. Mercury is little compared to the Earth is quite small. I think this one could fit in my room, but I'd have to take my bed out. It's um, it's rather large. It looks like it's about, I don't know, eight feet tall? Roundabout. It is, it is a pretty big planet. And you can see all those little marks in its surface. And there at the pole, there's this, like all these marks coming together. I'm using my binoculars now. My zoom function. Smallest planet in the solar system, super close to the sun. 
one day on Mercury is 176 Earth days. Man, you rotate slowly, Mercury. Your day side's gotta get pretty hot being that close to the sun and rotating that slowly. It has a very thin layer of gas bound by Mercury's gravity called an exosphere. You don't even get an atmosphere, you just get an exosphere. And the wrinkles are called scarps, which can be a mile high and hundreds of miles long. So those are actually scarps. I guess it's kind of a cross between a scar and a, and a carp? I don't know. I don't know. NASA's Messenger spacecraft has been orbiting since 2011. So it's, I guess, taking pictures and sending them back home to us. Very cool. Its atmosphere is surprisingly 40% oxygen. That's like twice as much oxygen per percentage as we have. But obviously the exosphere is a lot thinner than our atmosphere. Also a lot of sodium, hydrogen, helium, a little bit of potassium. All right, I think we're ready to continue to the next planet. See you later, Mercury. Nice getting to know you. Bye-bye. Here comes the next one. The way that the in the old Titans of Space, uh, the planets uh, all started out being present at the beginning. In the new Titans of Space, they only show up when you first visit them, but afterwards they stick around. Um, this was changed around a few times, but I, I kind of like the way it is now. You can focus your attention on the right things at the right time, but still leave everything in place so that you can do size comparisons. So I like that. Venus, diameter 12,000 kilometers, 0.72 from the sun, hottest planet in the solar system because of its atmosphere and its proximity to the sun. All right, bright enough to cast shadows on Earth on a moonless night. Whoa. Uh, yeah, because yeah, Venus shows up in the, in the sky like a, it looks like a super bright star. Atmospheric pressure at surface is 92 times that of Earth's. That would be uncomfortable. Average temperature is 462 degrees Celsius, 863 Fahrenheit, and it's orbited by ESA's Venus Express. And it is going to end its mission by just going right into the clouds. So that's pretty cool. And let's see if we can spin around it for a little while using my shoulder button. You know, I gotta say, these other planets, like the, the night side of Venus just looks completely black. It is totally boring. Earth's night side is much more interesting because we have all those artificial lights all over the world. And, you know, I'm a little bit biased, but I, I think Earth is prettier. Venus is pretty, Earth is prettier. I'm just saying. You may have noticed, if you look closely, there's lots of little rocks floating around out here in space. Just some debris floating around. And I think that's to kind of give you a little more sense of stereoscopy. And also just to look cool. All right. So that's enough Venus. Let's go ahead and proceed to whatever the next planet is. Goodbye, inner planets. Goodbye, Earth. Goodbye, Mercury. Goodbye, Venus. Oh, I forgot about Mars. I'm so sorry, Mars. How could I forget you? Mars is such an important planet. It's pretty much the only planet we could possibly ever live on in the whole solar system besides Earth. Look at Deimos, it's so tiny. Oh my gosh, it's little. Like, I knew Mars had two moons, but I didn't realize that its two moons were so ridiculously tiny. Our moon is huge. Mars doesn't get any huge moons. Anyway, robotic rovers love this place. You know it. Look, there it goes. Hey, Deimos. So little. I'm zooming in on it. It's still little. All right. So it's got this pockmarked cratered surface. It's red, as you know. Mars is humanity's next destination, although a small planet has roughly the same amount of land area as Earth. Interest. Oh, because no oceans. Right. Makes sense. There's evidence of liquid water on the surface long ago. Oh, hey, Phobos. You coming along too? You're a little bit bigger than Deimos, aren't you? Look at it. It's so tiny. It looks like it's the size of like a thimble or smaller. It is so little. All right. Goodbye, Phobos. All right. There's evidence of Olympus Mons, largest volcano in the solar system, is on Mars and it's 22 kilometers high. That is bigger than uh, Mount Everest by quite a long shot. Valles, Mariana, Mar Valles Marineris is a giant canyon nine times longer than our Grand Canyon and seven kilometers deep. Currently orbited by three spacecraft, two more on the way. We love investigating this planet. 
atmosphere is 96% carbon dioxide. We have carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. It's nowhere near that high of a percentage. I think it's like 2%, I want to say. All right, so that was fun. Now, before we leave the inner plants for good, I want to go over a few more of the settings in this application. Ceres! Ceres! Ceres is one of the biggest asteroids. The largest asteroid and one of our five dwarf planets. 2.7 AU from the sun, 